Okay, so now I'm delighted to be joined by Colin Bell. He's the Business Growth Director at the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership. Hi, Colin. Hi, Paul. How are you today? Not bad, yeah. Um, going all right. The weather's not as nice as it has been, but uh, I've seen before, it looks like you've been in the sun, so you've got, you've got a, good, a good tan there. Um, yeah, th thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it was I didn't get it in Spain, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, what I'd like to start is for anyone who's not sure, um, can you just give us a bit of an overview about what the Northeast Local Enterprise Partnership does, what it is, and specifically what your role is as the Business Growth Director? Yeah, so the, the Northeast LEP exists to coordinate and facilitate the development of economic strategy for the for the Northeast. So as a region, how are we going to be competitive? How are we going to grow? How are we going to going to increase levels of productivity and create jobs for, for the people across the Northeast. So the, the P of the, in the left is really important. It's a local enterprise partnership. So we work with our partners to pull that strategy and facilitate the development of that, that strategy and then coordinate the delivery of that. But most of the delivery is actually done through, through, the, through, through, the, through the partnership. So that's our prime, prime, prime role and, and the reason for our, for our existence. In terms of... Um, in terms of my role as um, the business growth di director at the LEP, I'm primarily um, responsible for the business growth um, aspect of that plan. So how we're going to get more people starting businesses, how we're going to get more people um, having an aspiration to grow their businesses and how we're going to get more people to improve the, the way they the way they do things and become more more efficient and, and productive as a result so it's making sure that we we're trying to increase aspirations um increase uh, in, increase demand you know for start start up and business improvement but then also making sure that the there's product services solutions out there in the marketplace that can help businesses move move forward okay great um so that was obviously the, the focus and the, and the drive before COVID-19. Um, so, uh, and in the Northeast Strategic Economic Plan that you published in January 2019, the ambition was to increase the density of scale-up businesses by 50% in the Northeast area. Um, can you just explain why that's actually important and, and how you were trying to do this bef before COVID-19? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't absolutely um the the, the focus on, on scale ups was uh, as you mentioned a real prominent um, and it is a real real prominent focus within the strategic economic plan for the re re region the reason for that is the evidence shows us that scale up businesses actually create the lion's share of um, new jobs and economic growth within the within the region so they represent around about one percent of the business base but but um, generate a, a third of all new economic growth and job jobs within within the region so one percent you know if we could grow that to 1.5 percent it would actually create around about five thousand six thousand between five and six thousand extra jobs within the northeast economy so Small amount of companies, but huge in, impact in terms of the the, the economy and, and jobs. I would say, however, that that doesn't mean that we uh, to achieve that achieve that goal doesn't mean that we can just focus on scale ups in isolation. Mm -hmm. It's a bumpy road, you know. Um, very few scale ups can can sustain that level of growth over a long time. So there's bigger amounts of um, churn. Um, to, to achieve that we really need to be focused on pipeline how can we get more people starting businesses in the first place and then going on to grow those businesses into into the future mm -hmm. yeah so well, well that's kind of we've talked before that's what we're trying to do we're kind of the pre-start to pre-scale up i think that's kind of the, the sweet spot for what we do with a lot of week and all our activities is to encourage more people to start businesses but then if they're already up and running how to get them to survive and thrive and then to scale when they're when they're ready to as well absolutely and, uh, and i think it kind of comes back to that p in the the lep as, as well paul you know it's working with people like like yourselves to make sure that we're kind of delivering that that journey and yeah, that longer term journey so yeah the work the work you're you're doing is a pivotal part of that Great. well thanks thanks for the support and um so do you want to talk a little bit about the programs and the initiatives that you've that you've got in place already to to help to to scale more businesses so um people yeah so, so, so suppose again just thinking about that 
I suppose the pipeline and trying to almost create more businesses at the bottom that hopefully go on to grow and, and, and scale over, over over time. So the the, the the first thing we've got to do is to try and grow ambition within people. So we need more people as a region to actually want to start a business and want to grow a business. That's particularly a challenge because again, what research and other surveys tell us is that actually within the Northeast, we've got the, the, the lowest business birth rate and the lowest um, ambition levels to grow to grow a business um, business of, of any any other region within within the within the UK. So with that that's something that we we need to need to address. Actually, how can we 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 try and ignite more entrepreneurialism across the northeast the northeast as a whole? And there's issues around that. You know, like if you look at the the structural makeup of the economy, there's um, big businesses, a big public sector. Historically, there's been a reliance on big employers and things. So they're, they're some of the things that we believe that we, we, we believe contribute to, to that. But, we, but everything's heading in the right direction from from that point point of view. Um, we we then need to make sure that we've got the. The, I suppose the gateway into that business support. So when people have that aspiration, where do they go? So that's where the Northeast Growth Hub comes in. Actually, you know, you, you want to start a business, you want to improve, you want to grow, contact the Growth Hub and we'll then help you understand your, your needs and make sure that we're really pinpointing the, the right solutions for you that exist out there in, in the marketplace. And then it's really the the, the partners the, the partnership or, or what we probably call the, the, the ecosystem. Um, so making sure that We've got organisations who can support companies to start, um, to grow. Actually, with, within that startup community, are are there some businesses that we can see who maybe we believe have a, a bit more potential? They've got some, you know, companies have got the potential to scale quite quickly from, from, from early early on. So we're trying to identify those those organisations and pull them into to accelerate uh, services. Um, you know, I know you're involved in, in several, Paul, like Tusk Park and the NatWest Accelerator and um, the High Potential Startup Program, et cetera. What's right for the, for the ind individual involved in their, their business? Um, there'll then be things that they've got to execute in their business. It could be the adoption of digital technology. It could be the need to access finance. So we make sure that we're providing the gateway into to those, those services. And um, and then there's the, and then as businesses, I suppose, move through that that maturity level, and you know maybe they start being part of supply chains. We've got programs that look at look at that. You know maybe they are have scale up potential, so they'll get involved in scale up northeast. So so we're trying to create a, an ecosystem that covers the covers the bases really, and that no matter what the the issue um, is within with, within a business, it could be. But, related to removing an obstacle or a barrier or or um, grasping an opportunity. We're trying to make sure that we're providing access to the people and the businesses and the resource that can actually help them move, move, move forward. And that's from the public education and private private sector. Brilliant. Okay, so you mentioned the Growth Hub, so it's, the, it's a website, isn't it? So that, that's the first thing, people should go to the, the Growth Hub website and see what support's available there and they can they can still book an appointment with you've got what you call connectors you've got the growth of connectors which are actual people that you can book a telephone call or or get some help over email and obviously not at the minute but you used to be able to have face-to-face -face meetings with them as well yeah well those uh, so you, you can have a zoom zoom call with, with, with them yeah so so essentially what they'll do particularly useful in uh in the current climate, because what they can do is almost um, work with companies to take stock, you know, carry out a bit of a health check of the, the business, um, help them consider the options that are available to them, put a bit of a plan together, but then make sure that they're then tapped into the resource, the finance, the, the, the programs and, and schemes that can actually help them move, move forward and implement that plan. Um, really experienced team, team of people, and I know um, I've been been a particularly useful resource for for businesses who are to start who are, who are chatting away through the, the the choppy waters that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. I've, I've said before, I think it's really valuable having them because sometimes, even if all the information is available online, sometimes just having someone really knowledgeable who can just signpost and say, "Right, this is the place you need to go." Like, there's loads of information here, but. And just speed up that process to get get the way you need to. I think that's really really valuable. Um, Absolutely, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Um, 
um, you mentioned the the high potential scale ups program. Do you want to do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because that's quite a innovative, interest in the, the approach to trying to identify people who are pre-staff but have ambition to to have really fast growing companies. Yeah, so, so one, one of the things, and again, this is really linked to that wider plan around trying to increase the density of um, scale up. So, one thing we need as a region, we need more startups in the first place. You know, we, we, we've got a significant um, gap there. You know, when we, we talk about levelling up, we've got quite a bit of levelling up. We need about 3,500 additional startups every year within the North East to. to um, to kind of meet meet the meet the, the you know what's the, what's the accepted average, but but within that we also need more businesses. Well, actually, to double the rate of high growth startups with with, with within within that mix. So the high potential startup program is really a, a, a program that firstly tries to spot those those businesses who who or, or people who have an idea that we believe has got high potential. Obviously, there's um, a lot of different compo- components to that. It'll, you've got to have a good idea, but that good idea has got to be in good hands as well. So we're kind of looking broadly ar- around uh, around the, the idea and the team and actually combined how, how can that, 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 I suppose, create the conditions for, for, um, for, for, for high growth. And then what essentially what the programme does, as you mentioned, Paul, it's um, a pre-start programme. So these it's to help people... I suppose to think through the idea to um, to grow their to grow their idea to grow themselves to understand exactly what they they need to, to do to execute the uh, to develop and execute a, a, a viable viable plan. But it takes them through a process that 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 helps them develop a really robust, rigorous plan that they believe in, have confidence in, and actually are prepared to step over the line, potentially leave a job um, and, and, and step over the line and actually start start that, that business. So I think a, a big part of it's actually confidence building. Quite often people that have the capability, they've got a great idea, but it's having that confidence and almost the, the validation that we, we, we this is something that we, 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 you know, really has strong, strong potential, and you know, don't be afraid to actually take the leap and step over over the line. As, yeah. as you know, there's lots of people who have the aspiration to start a business, but too few actually yeah. kind of do it. Yeah, to actually do it. Yeah. Well, well um, I was well for a long time. I was what was it, what they call an entrepreneur. So I was someone who yeah. had very entrepreneurial tendencies and. Um, but wasn't quite ready to, to leave the job and then eventually I did finally start my own business but um, sort of learned on the job by surrounding myself with entrepreneurs and reading all the books and going to all the events and stuff until until I just thought well if I don't do it now I'm never going to do it so uh, yeah. and, and, and actually Paul I think you hit on something really really interesting there because because one of the things we believe is that actually by creating more entrepreneurs in existing businesses we actually believe it over the longer term that will lead to more high growth startups yeah. so that's that's one thing we're particularly interested in actually can we inject um one more entrepreneurialism um entrepreneurship into existing businesses and hopefully spin outs will, will come from that 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 in the future whilst delivering real tangible benefit and new growth curves within within existing businesses so it's generally you know, to, to do this, I think we we need to spread the entrepreneurial bug across the northeast. Um, and again, you know, I think I think that the work you're doing with Startup Week's a, a great example and a great tool to help us do that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, even even when we look at who comes to the events, um, in the when we've done the physical events in previous years, despite the name, it's it's not just startups that come to the event. We do have a lot of established SMEs and and corporates yeah. come along because. They want to learn how to be more entrepreneurial and a bit more innovative, or, or, or understand that that entrepreneurial mindset and how to, how to tap into that. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it, it does it, help. And, and I think you know, taking the the current situation with with COVID, the need to be flexible, adaptable, whilst reducing cost and building resilience in in, in businesses, it's probably never been more important than ever. You know, it's that that entrepreneurial ability to kind of flex spot opportunities um to almost create something from nothing that's gonna help us grow out out of this so 
and it's, it's really, really important. Yeah, good. Well, they, I don't know if you've seen, but the kind of hashtag or the, the strap line I've been using is uh, start something new. So that, that you, you can start a new product or a new service or just a new way of thinking, even if you're still in a job or, um, yeah, just to kind of take stock of, of where you are and, and just to be a bit more experimental and, and try new things. That kind of okay. leads okay. to okay. Okay. approach. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you think about any business introducing a new, new product, although they've got existing resource, I mean, the process is fundamentally the same to start in a business, isn't it? You've maybe just got a bit more, bit more b- resource behind the plan, as it were. As it were. But yeah, the, almost that spin-out mentality can exist in businesses, spin out new ideas, mm-hmm. and create new new growth curves. You know, kind of create an envir- a, a safe environment where people can experiment and and try things and you know that, that that's that's kind of the, the sort of thing that's going to be demanded and, yeah. and we, we need to need to try and encourage yeah, well obviously the covid 19 is a horrible thing uh, but at the same time i am seeing you know people are being very entrepreneurial and innovative and and um, just totally um experimental and trying new things so i think it is going to be a good thing um but for some people they are going to develop new products and services and, and new businesses off the back of it of, uh, that's what i think anyway um yeah so on, on that right so since the, the covid19 lockdown um how how have your plans changed or the leps plans changed and are scale up still still a priority or is it more about survival and um steadying the, the ship for for the rest of this year at least you know, I suppose that just taking the, the, the question in, in, in part, but the first thing about the, the role of the LEP, I, su- I suppose what our role in developing um, regional economic strategy, facilitating that, coordinating the delivery of that, that probably hasn't changed. The context has though. You know, we've now, now obviously got the context of um, COVID-19, so we're really pivotal in... Um, and I suppose drawing together the COVID-19 economic response group and being being very much part of that, along with the combined authorities and the CB, CBI and our, our universities, etc. So, so um, that 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 bit remains. The the question around focus, I, I suppose the the initial focus has very much been short term. Mm-hmm. So when COVID hit, and particularly when the 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 lockdown measures were put in place and perhaps the, the particularly the week before that we were inundated so i think um calls to the growth have went up by around about 700 percent um and they were largely people ringing us in panic you know actually we've been locked down our, our business can't can't operate we've got no way of um generating demand i've got staff i can't pay you know i've got maybe got a month's working capital at best so you know really quite um ch- challenging discussions and at that point the the economic stimulus hadn't been announced mm-hmm. so it was almost you know f- firstly how do we try and get resource and and help help people see a route through this uh, in the the next couple of weeks and, and kind of you know try and ca- calm things down to a certain extent when the economic stimulus um, started to come through of course it was actually how can we get get that to people as quickly as possible um i think just one one thing to reference i think the the, the local authorities in the northeast have played an absolute winder top performers in the country in terms of getting uh, the cash consulted companies um so, so i think that you know we, we've been particularly fortunate in a, in a re in terms of how the how the um how the local authorities have responded so there was almost that initial the panic stage, I think. Then things started to gradually die down. Mm-hmm. Um, however, what emerged then was that there were actually a lot of people falling through the cracks. And I know this is something that you've particularly been um, commenting on and, and, and kind of surveying on and, and things, Paul. But, but again, so so a big part of our our job through the survival has actually been working with government to make sure that we're feeding through intelligence through from the region that's hopefully helped steer and inform their their, their policy. You know, they've been adjusting and their approach as we move through this and how they've learned what's working, what's not working, where, where the gaps are. And I think 
you know, I, I think we have had a government who's been responsive and who's been listening um, and, and acting quickly, you know, and, and, and taking some really, really bold, bold moves. So the short term is just kind of dealing with what it's dealt with. Where, where, we, where we are now, we're now thinking about the, probably the, the medium term. So what do we need to do over the next four to six, to six months? Um, I think scale up starts to, to come into this because now what we're starting to think about is actually how do we restart? How do we get com companies in a position where they can operate under social distancing rules? Uh, they can keep employees and staff safe. They can they can manage a gradual return of demand and bringing employees back and, and all, all all those those sort of things. So we're kind of looking at what what's um, what what what's re required through that process and and hopefully because because unfortunately what one of the things is you know what we will see through this this um, this situation is that there'll be winners and losers. That's inevitable. We're going to go into what's likely to be the deepest recession on record or, or certainly in certainly in modern, modern times so the, you know the, the unfortunately the, there's going to be winners and losers from that but uh, consolidation in markets so one thing that we're particularly interested in and this is purely thinking about uh, uh, the economic recovery is which companies have weathered the storm? Which companies have weathered the storm? Come out of this in a relatively strong position. Are they in markets, or do they have skills capabilities that could be repurposed to focus on new and emer emerging markets? And how do we spot them early? Get behind them because they're going to be the people who help us grow out of this this, this position. They're going to be the wealth creators, the job creators of the future. So. You could probably see a t two million pound business or one million pound business um, pre-pandemic maybe move into 20, 50 million, um, you know, because of that, the, the nature of consoli consolidation. We're also looking within that in terms of, you know, where do we see the, the you know, the real opportunities with, with, with within the region in terms of our strengths, capabilities, and actually what 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 the, the trends that in the markets that COVID's really going to going to um, going to stimulate, I suppose, and how we can come with position companies and clusters and, and sectors sectors within that. So. I think scale ups are really, really critical to, to actually how how the how the economy recovers and how we create more and better jobs yeah. for for the people of the, the North East. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a great that's a great um, bring this up to date because it, it it has been such a challenge in time for everyone. But I think the government has responded really well and I have been really impressed with. Um, uh, they do seem to be taking on board the feedback and, and responding quite quickly. So um, I know, like just personally, the, um, the bounce back loan. I actually applied for a bounce back loan and I, I got the money um, within less than forty eight hours. So yeah, because um, I, I was amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was amazing. So I was looking at all the different options and um, I didn't quite qualify for, for any of the. Um, I didn't qualify for the business rates relief um, or the or the grants that were available. And I was, you know, I was trying to stop money going out and, and get more money put, coming in. But actually, when I looked into it, I thought the um, to give a bit of a cushion, a bit of breathing space. There's no quicker, easier, and <coughs> cheaper way to get yeah. out than, than the bounce back loan. So, so why not? You know. So, um, mm. so yeah, I was I was really impressed with that. I, th I think I applied online on the on the Monday. Uh, and it took literally just a few minutes to to apply. It said I was yeah. it said I was approved, and then got the money. Like I say, less than forty eight hours. So it's been great. Hi. Yeah, so, and, and, and it's a thing. Things like that are required, and it's how how the combination of the different stimulus packages uh -huh. could come together. It it doesn't get in the way of the fact that you know businesses need demand. Yeah. They need sales, you know, in which to, and, and that, that, and it's, you know, and, and different businesses are going to be in a different position in terms of actually when demand returns, how able are they to operate under social distancing. There's also other things. I mean, we're 
speaking to a lot, lot of businesses at the moment as they're considering restarting that they can't quite see a way of making the numbers work. Actually, because to restart, they're going to have to have, you know, X, Y, and Z employees, you know, take it a restaurant, they'll need a chef, they'll need in front of the house, they'll, you know, they need, need a combination of people. And if they can only operate with maybe a quarter of the covers that they used to help, they can't make the numbers stack up. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really challenging for, for some businesses. Take tourism. I mean, if they miss the summer months, it's the, it's the money they're making the summer months that gets them through the rest of the year. Yeah. So the, the stimulus has been absolutely fantastic. I think it's, um, you know, it really helps, but it doesn't, you, you, you know, it, it, it doesn't get, it doesn't, um, totally solve some of the issues that, that businesses have got, got over the medium to, to, to longer term. But, you know, hopefully it just means that more businesses are co- going to come out of this stronger and be in a position to grow as, grow as beyond. There's still a lot, a lot of challenge lies, lies ahead. I think, um, well, again, just from, from my perspective, at the end of last year, going into this new year, I knew that I was over-reliant on one big event to kind of um, fund most mm. most of the year's activities. So the plan was to diversify and, and focus more on, on new products and services or, or just additional products and services. So, so when uh, when it's happened and I've had to postpone the physical event till the end of it, that has caused a big problem with cash flow. So um, yeah. the thing with when you have um, problems with your cash flow, obviously it, it's, you make short-term decisions if you, and you, you you are at risk of panicking and, and not not making the best decisions. So, again, for, for me to have that money sitting there that I'm trying not to spend if I don't have to, I'm, I'm, still, yeah. I'm still bringing in money in, in other ways, but it's just taking the pressure off and giving me a bit of breathing space to be more entrepreneurial again and, and be more innovative and creative. So, that, that's why I think it's, it is a, is a really, really good oh, 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 Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think a lot of companies, uh, there, a lot of people, taking that opportunity you know to innovate think about the future plan and kind of get onto those projects that they that that, that, that have been been, been on that been on the the, the the back burner really but um yeah the, the cash is king i mean just going going back to scale up so i mean that's a particular issue we've got with our existing scale up base because scale ups they're growing quickly they're they're um they're kind of winning business like crazy, but the other thing they're doing is they're burning cash. Um, so cash flow is always an issue in a fast-growing, a fast-growing company. Mm-hmm. That causes a bit of an issue for us because um, because ultimately, it's it, it, in theory, there are you know some of the northeast strongest companies you know who are in who are the, the ones who actually have the worst cash flow position or the working capital position but they're the ones we're really reliant on to innovate us and grow us out of this current current situation so there's been a a, a lot of work happening um you know particularly through programs like scale up northeast to work with those companies but really to just shore up that 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 cash position has been quite a quite an intensive effort effort on that and things like bounce back loans because of the issues with the wider coronavirus business interruption loan scheme um rolls off the tongue that that doesn't it um you know that you know it was it was needed it was re- really needed yeah. um and it, it certainly certainly helps yeah good um you touched on it before but do you want to say a little bit more about the uh the northeast covid19 economic response group and, and what what that does and, and what it, what it, who, who's part of that yeah, so the the, the COVID nineteen economic response group for, for the for the North East Lep, Lep area. It's, um, it, it's a, a, a group that, that consists of the the Lep, the two combined authorities, the Norfolk Town Combined Authority, and the North East Combined Authority that covers the local authority set south, south of the south of the the, the River Tyne. Um, CBI and uh, IU universities um, the form the core group but of course there's a lot of other other stakeholders who are involved in in helping helping shape that shape that plan um and the cbi the conduits the other membership organizations they're very much part, very, very much part of um but part, part of the, the the group and the the the, the, the formation of, of strategy but really really that that group's um come together to form the economic response to, to this so 
taking a, a really multi-dimensional view of this, what's the impact going to be on people, place, the, the economy, um, looking at different scenarios of how this may may play out, the, you know, in terms of economic forecasting, um, what trends uh, we're seeing with, within people's behaviours and the way businesses are operating, but at the moment that we believe will maybe endure or become sticky and, you know, like we, 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 we talk, you know, we've talked before, football about kind of, you know, homeworking and, you know, the, the increased use of digital technology and all those sort of things. So thinking about how the, I suppose the world's, May change and what that what what that that mean that means to the re the region. So the that, that works um, focused on five particular areas. The first ones around supporting businesses. So that's what what I focus on. Again, there's a probably a short, medium, longer term um, focus to all all of these um, strands of activities. The second ones around actually how we're going to maintain people in employment. Um, so how can we keep people working how can we make sure that they they continue to be employment again over the short medium and, and, and long term so at the moment things like furloughing has been a great tool around that redeployment of labor from areas where demands um reduced to areas where it's where it where it spiked as it were making sure that we're making making those connections as we move forward actually and you know inevitably you know there will be a, a, a rise in unemployment how do we create those future mm -hmm. good jobs for, for people people with, with within the region mm -hmm. there's then a body of activity that's looking at opportunities largely and challenges so with covid the as, as, I, as i've just mentioned there's been drops in demand in in some areas but there's equal Probably been spikes in demand in others so you know a lot of commentary around PPE and sanitizers and all those sort of things you know so some supply issues so um, we've been helping people pivot um, use their skills capabilities resources to to um, supply into some of those areas and um, enhance grant funds and for supply chain northeast and, and, and things in place to help people capitalize on that equally there's problems that have arisen, so problem, new problems that require new solutions. So there's a need for innovation. So um, my colleague Alan Welby, as our innovation director, has been working closely with the likes of Innovate UK to um, to understand um, and, and, and and I suppose um, promote those opportunities or those those problems to, to people in the northeast, yeah. and working with people like the Super Network, the Innovation Super Network, to try and um, help people within the region develop the solutions that hopefully then have ongoing co commercial potential and also to work with Innovate UK to get the funding behind that to make those, to make those thing, things happen. So there are three kind of immediate re response actions. The, the next two actions um, or areas of focus within the group are are um, around the longer term recovery. So strand four of, of the, the the group is really focused on what does that longer term recovery look like? And um, again, very multi-dimensional in its approach, considering everything from kind of kind of transport. Um, you know, with programs like EU exit still coming over the um, over the horizon. So actually, how do we do, deal with deal with things like that? So you know, really taking a very very broad, multi-dimensional approach to, to what what's required as a region to 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 effectively effectively recover. And then the, the final things really around coordination. So we you know we need to have a voice with government. We need to um, to make sure. That the northeast is effectively represented. We're um, shouting about the great stuff about the northeast and the capabilities and how how we can be part of the the solution for the country moving forward in terms of the the economic re recovery, but also the challenges. Where do we need, you know, attention? Where do we need funding, finance, policy changes, all those sort of things? So there's almost a bit of a lobbying uh, effort in, in, involved in that, and making sure that we're we're feeding intelligence and, and having a constructive dialogue with government. So that's mm. that's that's pr primarily what the what the group's focused on. Wow. Okay. So well, doing a lot. So well, well remembered for all of us because I mean the left and, and them this this year we'd be doing so much in, in a very short space of time. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I know you're really really busy. 
Um, and, and, I think, and I think just one thing to reference on that, I mentioned the great work the local authorities are doing. I think there's a, the, the partnership's working working really well together. So everyone's, um, and, and I say it's not just the core members of that group, it's the wider infrastructure. So I think I'm doing a lot of work with the business support providers and everyone's kind of mucking in and do, doing what they can really. So I, I think we're, it, 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 as a collective, the, the North East, the North Northeast is doing a really, Re, re, you know they're kind of coming together and, and doing all, all we can to to respond to this i think that's great um it's probably probably a bit too soon to to say but um are you seeing any signs of recovery or um how do you think the northeast will bounce back over the next six or twelve months uh, so the, the the first first part of the question we're seeing a recovery i think we're starting to i think we're starting to see businesses who who can create demand, um, can make the numbers stack up, can operate in a way that's gonna adhere to social distancing and keep keep customers and employees safe do, doing so. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of um, companies pivoting, doing things differently, maybe the way they deliver goods, the way they generate the demand, what they're producing. So we mentioned PPE, et cetera, and seeing some really interesting collaborations. So taxi firms um, collaborating with restaurants and things to deliver, to develop delivery services. So, you know, the, the, there's lots of, um, the, the, there's lots of good, good stuff, good stuff happening um, at the moment. So I think we're, we're starting to see that, but it is going to take time because demand is the key thing and consumer demand and global demand, you know, is part, part of that, part, part of that, that equation. But, but we're certainly starting to see things moving in, in, in the right direction. And in the conversation we're having through the growth of daily with businesses is about how do they restart? How do they start to operate again? So it's all part of that that kind of effort effort move move moving for moving forward. The the second half about the northeast and how it bounces back. Actually, I, I think we've got. A, I think the the northeast has a really really strong position in the future. Um, of the global economy, I think there's lots of things where our strengths and to be part of the shit solution and and, um, and I suppose get get behind some some major areas of areas of demand. So um, just to reference a, a few. few, few of that so we've got a really good capability in um, manufacturing engineering offshore uh, I see that it was announced at the port of time is going to be the home of Dogger Bank which will actually be the world's largest offshore wind farm that'll be you know operated through through the, the, the port of time that'll be the gateway to it and it'll be very much be, be the ho home of that so in terms of that future trend in terms of energy renewables um it, it you know we're really really well primed for that so i think that that's something that's really exciting and that's a huge global market um that the, the northeast can can att attack with, with bigger again pro probably part of our manufacturing capability um one of the things i think covid has how, how, well, will will result in it. Um, there's going to be more required to have requirements to um, be able to have strong, robust, and resilient um, pharmaceutical supply chains within within our country. Um, you know, we can't be that reliant on actually importing drugs from from over overseas anymore. The northeast is actually probably the the number one region for that. I think a third of all. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceuticals actually manufactured in the northeast, so we've got a great base to, to, to build on on from from there. Things like um, actually cars, you know, we're probably going to see quite a vast reduction in demand for combustion engines for for, for some time. Um, and let's face it, they're they're kind of something that's been phased out anywhere. But when where the northeast is developing world leading capabilities in the manufacture in the development of electric vehicles 
So again, we've got some really innovative co companies there who are really leading the way globally. Um, we've got, you know, I think, you know, 25% of all electric vehicles are, are, are sold across Europe are manufactured here, here in here in the northeast. So again, I think we're in a prime position to, to really, really capitalise on. And there's more, more and more things. You know, the strength of our digital sector that actually underpins all of all of that. Uh, are areas where I think we can look forward with real confidence because they're all areas where there's going to be growing domestic and global demand yeah. and, and we're, we're in a prime position to capitalise. Sorry, probably a long way of answering that question, Paul. No, that's, well, that's a great answer. Like, I, I think we are in a, in a good position. Um, so obviously once people have got over the shock of what's going on and then remember that we already had real strengths in these areas, but in a way, um, it's just shining a light on them even more. Or, or it's it's now the time to really push forward on on some of these things and yeah. because we, we do have advantages over other other parts of the country and other parts of the world in, yeah. in certain areas. And, and I think that the the important thing is that already areas of strength, but and you know, in the world the world be a, a, a re, rebalancing. You know, because with electric vehicles, you get a hit on oil and gas so, you know there's there's kind of trade trade-offs with, with, with anything but in, in those markets they're they're going to be growing on on the back of covid and covid will probably accelerate the growth so you know it, although it doesn't take away the the immediate pain um it you know we, we can look forward and um you know with confidence i think as a, as a region yeah yeah definitely I, th I think we might have already answered this, but I was the next question was going to be for anyone thinking of starting a business or needing help to keep going or looking to grow, um, where should they go after watching this video? Uh, the, 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 um, go, go to the Northeast Growth Hub. So northeastgrowthhub.co.uk. Um, you'll find a wealth of information on on what support available to to people starting a business or existing businesses. But again. You know, if, if you want to talk things through, we've got a, a great team of um, what we call Growth Hub Connectors who can can help you consider the options and make sure that you, you're um, taking advantage of all the support that's available to you. Yeah, right. well, when we when we post this video, we'll, we'll share links underneath in the in the comments underneath the, the video so everyone can, can access that and, and view the resources we've been talking about. Is there, is there anything else you want to, want to talk about or, or let people know about that's, that's either live now or, or coming soon in the, in the, in the next few weeks? Uh, that, that, I think that, that's broadly it. I mean, just to, some specific things that we've launched um, in, in response to COVID, we've, we've, um, it, We've we've launched a capital grant fund, um, so the the in the the grants are for people who can manufacture and supply PPE. So there's eight eighty percent grant funds that that are paid up front to to businesses who are in a position to to do to um to supply PPE. But also if there's been projects that have been stalled and could be brought forward, um, there's also grants available to to those those type of businesses as well. And they're very, very much I say capital grants. It's a they're they're available to buy kits and machinery and um and, and things like that that needed to actually put a, a company in a position where they can produce um pr produce goods so pr probably most targeted at manufacturers as well the, the other thing and the, uh, you mentioned this a bit earlier but paul is that we've launched um crowd crowd funder northeast lab um, as a, a program the I suppose what, what we're seeing is, um, you know, we're, we're seeing people fall through the cracks. So hopefully it's a mechanism that will allow people who haven't been able to access some of the support to to raise some funding. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing is that we recognise that there are people who are trying to almost crowdfund or, or get or encourage their customers to um, buy forward. So they'll maybe, um, you know, pay for a product or service now and redeem it in a couple of Months time, yeah. And um, so the crowdfunder uh, um, company have a platform and and use it to bring a bit of structure to that to yeah. to, to, to that 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 crowdfunding effort that they that they may be think, thinking about doing or already doing. The benefit is that we'll match pounds to the level match 
pound for pound up to, uh, to 25 percent of the ending target the LEP will then start matching pound for pound so um you know again we're, we're just trying to think of different ways to to get working capital into companies so they can ride the storm and come out the back end in the best best possible position uh, that's great well, well we'll share a link to that as well because uh, yeah again that's an example of um being creative because i think the crowdfund uh, initiative had been in place so there was already something with crowdfunder for a while but hadn't really done much with it up, up until recently so it's, it's mm -hmm. that right it's kind of a, a way to repurpose something that maybe was already there but um repackaged in a, in, a, in a new offer in a, in a better better offer than before absolutely yeah okay great well always a pleasure to you colin really appreciate you all your support and uh always like talking to you about and um i think it is obviously a challenging time but i think it is an exciting time as well for the next six to twelve months for the northeast so thanks again for absolutely and it's and it's good to see you paul yeah no you too. <laughs> All right, okay, we'll leave it there. All right, thanks a lot, Colin. Okay, cheers. Cheers, take care. Bye.